Now for the patterns, typically I'll use regular paper that comes in from advertisement in the mail and stuff. It's a heavier stock paper and typically the paint doesn't um, go through the paper. So I'm not going to ruin the base coat. So with an X-Acto knife, I'll just cut out some basic shapes. And you can see, you know, what that shape would look like and this shape would look like and basically these have been painted because I've used them in other projects but basically we want to use um, these patterns what we're gonna do is we're gonna place it on the controller and we're gonna spray now for this particular project since the controller is smaller than um, the guns I've painted before um, I'm going to cut out some smaller patterns uh, for it these are a little bit larger than I would like to use so I'm gonna cut out some small ones and then we'll start doing some patterns okay so this is a small shape I've cut into the paper not too big you'll see it right here it's cut out then I just cut out the entire sheet off and this is what I'll lay on top of the controller to create the pattern I've cut out a few others, which I have here. This one's a little bit longer. And here's another one. And then basically we'll apply these different shapes with different colors. And we'll also use some um, tree leaves or branches in order to give some realistic effect. Okay, so what we've done is I've taken the paper and I'll lay it on top and once I place it on top I'll find a spot where I want to put a print so I'll put it on top of the plastic and I'll spray that plastic on not too much paint just lightly and what that does is that then we start to add a few patterns to it okay now before you add the next one Sorry. Before you add the next one, then you'll want to let it dry for a few minutes so that the paper does not stick to the paint you just sprayed. Okay, so so far I've used four different patterns with three colors, and you just let them dry between each spray so that the paper doesn't touch each one. And I've added as much pattern as I want to right now. The next step is I'm going to use uh, leaves from the tree. And that's going to wrap up the, uh, the detail on the controller. Okay. So the next thing is I'm going to use a leaf. Now in this case I have a couple different in my yard. Uh, I like to use this one. It gives a nice, you know, obvious detail of a leaf you know these round parts to it then you have something like this uh, ultimately same deal I'm gonna put it across the controller and we're just gonna spray it a, a light mist just to create the silhouette of the leaf okay so after several patterns applied different colors you can get an idea so next thing I have to paint is in between the L1 the uh, L1 and R1 buttons L2 and uh, L1 there's the small little insert that goes there I'll need to paint that as well I'll probably paint it like a dark color so it blends in with the with the buttons and then after that we go to clear coat Okay, so I've had the controllers drying outside for a little while, and I spray painted the two inserts. Um, I'll just need to wipe it down, and then give it a um, um, a coating of clear coat to protect the paint job that's been done. Okay, the next step is going to be the clear matte finish. Uh, this is also from Rust-Oleum. 
the camouflage paint typically has a flat finish to it so this is going to provide us with two things it's going to protect the paint where we can uh, we can hold the controller and it'll preserve it you won't um, uh, wear it out as quickly as you would if you would not put this clear coat on and it gives it a, uh, a matte shine so it's not a, a gloss shine but a, just a very uh, light hint of a shine which looks great once the, the controller is put back together very professional looking so what we're gonna do is make sure we uh, shake it up you know clear the nozzle and we're just going to give it a light coat okay so now once we've sprayed the clear coat we're gonna let it dry for for some time now and then we'll come back and we'll start the reassembly process okay so now that the clear coat has dried I've removed the painters tape from the original label and you can see the matte shine on the controller and now we'll be able to begin reassembling it okay so I've started by reinserting the buttons the start select and the PlayStation logo in the middle buttons for the d-pad and the crystals basically that pass the illumination of which controller you're using there and I'll continue by adding the pads Now for those of you that wish to venture off into a, a, uh, an additional mod, if you notice basically this is an extension of the uh, PlayStation logo. Now this particular insert is kind of like a clear light uh, plastic and that basically when the board's in place will go through this hole and on the board itself it's marked it's been silk screened with LED 5 now it's kinda hard but basically right in the middle of the board inside you'll look and it'll say LED 5 now it does not have an LED but chances are if you're looking to venture into soldering a surface mount LED more than likely that would illuminate and would allow this logo to turn on when this controller is in use might have been a thought they had but never really implemented it um, something to keep in mind if you're lo looking to tinker around with it uh, you'd need a meter in order to test the polarity or simply look at the silk screen uh, as it should indicate the direction of the uh, of the uh, LED. Okay, so now the battery has been installed. Don't forget the small silver screw that goes right here to hold the board in place. Battery sits right in the center of the guide there, and then we'll proceed to put the back shell on. Alright, one of the things to keep in mind is the small insert that goes between the two buttons has these two small legs. These, with the controller upside down, are facing down. So basically what you want to do is move this button upward and then slide that piece in place. Okay, as you insert the back cover, the small inserts have a small notch on the sides where this the back housing meets and should slide in and you want to have all four 
in place before you slice. So you have one here, one here, one here, and one here before you can slide it all in place in order to close it properly, like so. Okay, so now that we've put the housing back together, um, I haven't put the screws back on because I wanted to make sure that everything is functional, so I've just uh, turned on my PlayStation so I can make sure that everything is active and just trying it out before uh, I put the final screws in in order to start playing. This is the PS3 controller, fully camouflaged, has been tested and operational. So you can see the detail of the leaves on the grips. perfect for when I want to hide the controller my son will never find it